Welcome in everyone. In this video, I'm going to cover linearization. First, I'll go over into the importance of linearization and how it can be useful within the field of math or Calc 1. Uh, then we'll go into finding the linearization of a function, finding just dy, and then finding errors. And I'm talking about approximation errors. Let's get into it. So what is the importance of linearization? Linearization is really, really good for approximating nearby um, an x value. So for example, you can see we have a quadratic function graphed here and a tangent line uh, for when x equals 3. Now if I zoom in on this, and I'm talking way in on it, just pick this little piece right here you can see pretty easily that uh, the tangent line does a relatively good job of approximating uh, the curve just within that small domain of x values. Uh, so we will go over how to linearize a function, which does involve derivatives as we are looking at tangent lines. And you may have noticed that the, the tangent line doesn't exactly approximate. Uh, so like here and here, there are differences in the y values. Um, and that leads to some error. So we will go ahead and look at finding the error in the calculations as well. The other thing is tangent lines are linear. And we often use something more, uh, I'm going to say, more dramatic than a quadratic function, either a 10th degree polynomial or something trigonometric related. And it is just a whole lot easier to use a line to get some values than it is to use a trig function or a high degree polynomial. So let's look at how to linearize a function. Linearization. If f is a differentiable function at x equals a, then the approximating function for f is l of x equals f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. And this equation is literally just uh, a re-implementation of the point-slope form of a line. So as you can see here, we have y minus y sub 1 equals m times the quantity x minus x sub 1. And if we just add this y sub 1 to both sides in a slightly unconventional way, then you can see we will have uh, this similarly formed equation. Um, remember, x, or the a value, would get substituted in for x here, and since the function is going to change, we could find the y value of that ordered pair by simply substituting a in for f, so that would equal the y value we know. And the slope is what we would get when we substitute the a value into the derivative as at this point, I hope you understand, the derivatives gives the slopes of tangent lines. So, just a quick breakdown that this is, in fact, a linear equation. Uh, from there, we can call the approximation of f of x by l of x the standard linear approximation. Maybe I do this to make it feel more like a textbook. Of f by l. And then we can also say that x equals a is the center of the approximation. Now let's go into how to actually linearize a function. All right, first and only example for linearizing a function uh, at x equals a. So first and foremost, I would like to point out that the a value here is in fact negative 4. 
And if we're trying to figure out the linearization of this, that the a value is pretty stinking important as it shows up three times in this formula. So, first thing I'm going to do is not substitute it in here. I'm actually going to figure out f of a first. So all we have to do is substitute 4, sorry, negative 4 in for x, and then simplify what we get. So 4 squared is 16 plus 9 is 25, squared of 25 is 5. So this will be f of a when a is equal to negative 4. The next thing I want to figure out is f prime of a. So let's go ahead and figure out the derivative for f of x, which should be x over x squared plus 9, the quantity raised to the 1 half power. From there, we can substitute negative 4 in for all the x's and get negative 4 over 5. And you're able to do that relatively quickly if you recognize. You can just substitute negative 4 in for x in the numerator. And the denominator here is exactly what we figured out right here with negative 4 substituted in. So the denominator here is 5. From there, we can just start substituting everything we need into the linearization equation. So L of x equals, now let's see, f of a, we figured out back here, is 5. So 5. Then I'm not going to write down plus because f prime of a, which is this here, is in fact negative. So I'm going to write it as a minus 4 fifths times x. And similarly, I'm not going to write a minus here because when I substitute negative 4 in here, it'll be subtracting a negative, which is just plus 4. So here is the linearization of this function centered at x equals negative 4. And just to be very complete about this, the linearization in slope-intercept form can be rewritten as negative 4 over 5x plus 9 over 5. In this example, we're going to linearize another function. And you can see that the difference here between where we're centering it in the last example is this is kind of a weird place to be centering our linearization. So in order to make it easier, we're going to just go nearby to the nearest whole number and center it at negative 2 instead of negative 2.1. And you can see right off the bat, if we evaluate this function at negative 2, we get 0. 4 plus a negative 4 is 0. So we can go ahead and then find the derivative again. So the derivative of f of x is 2x uh, plus 2. And when you evaluate the derivative at negative 2, you get negative 2. Then we can go ahead with our linearization being the y value of the ordered pair we were given with and modified slightly, right? We're move using negative 2 here for x which means we get 0 for y. So 0 plus the slope of the tangent line at that point, negative 2, times x minus the x-coordinate we used, which would have been this one here. So minus a negative would be plus 2. And just to clean that up a little bit, the linearization would be negative 2 times x plus 2, or you can distribute the negative 2 and get negative 2x minus 4. So either one of these equations here would be fine to use for the linearization. On this slide, we're going to take a look at differentials. So let y equal f of x be a differentiable function. The differential dx is an independent variable, just kind of like x is the independent variable. Um, then the differential dy is dy 
equals this notation, f prime of x times dx. And if you take a look at the original equation we're working with, y equals f of x, and you take the derivative of the left side using differential notation, and you take the derivative of the right side using prime notation, really we're just taking the derivative of both sides using some different notations, like this. And then it looks like if you just multiply both sides by dx, you'll get this equation here. Now, a dy or a dx, as we look at them individually, just represent a small change in x or a very small change in y. That's all the dy dx mean when they're separated out. A small change in whatever variable we're looking at. Differentials can be applied to all of the derivatives that we have looked at up until this point. So we can go ahead and take the derivative of this function as normal, right? So just the right side up here first, this would be 3x squared uh, minus 3 over 2 times x to the 1 half power, just using the power rule. And then what we can do from here is just multiply this right side by dx, and that would equal dy. The left side would be dy over dx, and then we would multiply dx to both sides. And the same thing can happen even if we're using the chain rule, like example 2 here. We could have dy equals the derivative of the right side is negative sine of x squared times 2x, all of that times dx. And it even works with implicit differentiation. So when you take the derivative of this function here, you'll get dy dx equals all of this. Now if we just multiply both sides of this equation by dx, we will get this function right here. So why would this be a useful thing uh, to know about? An example using differentials. The radius of a circle increases from 10 inches to 10.1 inches. Estimate the area of the larger circle using differentials. So we're given the equation a equals pi r squared, which is the area for a circle. And if we take the derivative of both sides and using the differential notation, we'll get a equals 2 pi r dr. Oops, dA equals 2 pi r dr. And from the previous slide, we know that this is a small change in r, and this would represent a small change in the area. And we know something about the change of r. We know that the radius increased from 10 to 10.1 inches. So the difference between these would be the dr. So let's write that down. dr equals the larger minus the smaller, which is just 0 0.1. So we have everything we need in order to um, figure this out. This would be 2 pi, the radius is currently 10, and it changed by 0 0.1. And when you multiply all of this out, you get 2 pi. So the change in the area is 2 pi when the radius increased from 10 to 10.1 inches. So what would the area of a 10.1 inch circle be? an estimate, it would be the area of a 10 inch circle, which would be 100 pi, if we had this here, plus the 2 pi that we estimated. So the estimated area is 102 pi. Now, of course, as we know, that's not the exact area of a, a circle with radius 10.1 the exact area would be what we get if we just substitute 10.1 in for r. And when you do that, you end up getting 102.01 pi uh, inches squared, we should put here, inches squared, inches squared, 
and inches squared. There we go. Uh, for the actual area. And you can see here, there's just going to be a slight difference in this answer from this answer. So we get a pretty good approximation. Again, not exact. We're off by one one hundredth of a square inch. But it's close enough. And this is where we can figure out what the error is. We can subtract the exact minus the estimated error and see that it is 0 0.01 inches squared error here. Let's talk about finding error. The first thing you want to do when you're trying to approximate error is find delta F. And if this notation looks familiar, maybe you've seen the uh, the equation to find a slope be delta y over delta x, it just means the change of. So as x, some specific value of x, increases just a little bit, the y values will also change. So this is just telling us the difference in the y values. How did y change as x changed just a little bit? Then we'll go through and find the differential of f, which is pretty similar to what we have already uh, talked about with in terms of differentials. It ends up being just a small movement. And then we compute the difference of those two and take the absolute value of that difference to get the approximated error. So for this final example of the video, we have a function f of x equals 2x squared plus 4x minus 3. We have an x sub 0, or a starting x value of negative 1, and we have a dx value of 0 0.1. So what we will do is we will find delta f by substituting 0 point, or sorry, negative 1 and 0 0.1 into that first function, and we will evaluate that. And we will take away what we get when we evaluate the function at f of negative 1. And when you combine these numbers together, you get negative 0 0.9. So when we figure this out, we get negative 4.98 for this evaluation and negative 5 for this evaluation. And when we subtract these two numbers, we get 0 0.02. The second piece to this is to find df, which is f prime of x sub 0 times dx. So we have to find the derivative. To do that, we just use the power rule. It'll end up being 4x plus 4. And we're going to multiply to that uh, dx then we can make some substitutions. x sub 0, we're going to substitute in there, and that will be 4 times negative 1 plus 4 times 0 0.1. Now the first set of parentheses simplifies to 0, so all of this will just equal 0. From there, we just have to take the uh, difference of these, so I will have 0 0.02 minus 0 from step 1 to step 2, and then we will just take the difference and then uh, the absolute value of that, which is 0 0.02. I hope this video helps you out. Good luck!